I have a single terminal window up with two tabs. The tab on the right is the local build server, currently showing a directory listing. The tab on the left is pointed at the code directory on the local desktop environment. The goal is to move data back and forth between the local environment and the build server. I will create a GTK sample directory to house the C code file containing the GTK Hello World example. I will use this Hello World example to test the build server. I will use gedit text editor to create and modify source code. The gedit text editor is a very useful and versatile tool for creating source code. And I will customize it so that it's a little more adept and useful for creating source code. There are a number of plugins available for gedit. I've already installed those plugins, but installing the plug plugins does not enable them. So you must go into the preferences dialog in gedit to enable the relevant plugins for your activities. The overall desktop theme that I've set is dark mode and the gedit editor embraces that and presents a dark mode layout. We start by writing the code in C based upon the reference code in gedit. The reference code basically requires you to create a main method and this main method is going to establish an application context that will then allow you to create a window bound to that application context. The details of that will be explained later. At this point, our goal is to create a code file that we can compile in the build server. The build server should be correctly set up and configured to recognize source code files and allow us to compile and link those files into program executables. So I've just saved the file and I'm currently navigating to the sample directory where I'm going to um, house this file. file will be called main.c and this file I'm going to send over to the build server. The main tool that I will use to do that will be SCP which stands for secure copy. Before we get to that point there is more code we need to write in order to have a complete GTK sample that we can run. This sample will present a single window with a button in the middle and on line 14 we have the start of an application, a GTK application, and this application will be used to establish the overall program context under which GUI visuals are encoded, 
for display through the graphics card. Line 20 is very important because that basically cleans up the application once it is complete. When creating an example like this, it helps to refer to the main documentation that describes how this is supposed to go. Whether you're building a simple application or a more elaborate program or system that's based on GTK, oftentimes the starting point will be the blueprint established in an example. And here we see the blueprint for the application and this is a good opportunity to make sure that the code we're writing corresponds to that. You'll notice on lines 6 and 7 we have the function prototypes for a callback function that we will define when the application starts up. This callback function will establish a GUI window that will be displayed on screen. Lines 32 and 33 is the beginnings of this activate function that will be the callback handler that will be used to generate the GUI instructions necessary to present a screen. When writing code like this it makes sense to take your time and make sure you're doing it correctly. Yet, despite best efforts, a bug is introduced in this code and the bug will become obvious at a later point. For now, what's important is transcribing the example code from the GTK documentation so that we've expended maximum effort to ensure that a complete and successful example. On lines 38 through 40, we're setting up the window itself. That is our initial goal, to get a window up and running. The window becomes the scaffold upon which the other visual elements are laid out, positioned, and presented. GTK does provide a widget called a button box. What's interesting about a button box is that it encapsulates a common pattern you see in GUI applications. That is, you have a button and you want to put this button in a row. So maybe you have two or three buttons and you want those buttons listed out horizontally. So inevitably you design code that ensures that the, the Y coordinate of the buttons are the same and the X coordinates of the buttons are designated such that you have equidistant spacing between the buttons. And if you spent significant time writing uh, GUI code with different toolkits, you'll know that this pattern usually emerges in some form or another when toolkits 
have the primitives for laying out elements, but not necessarily organizing them automatically. And so that's what the button box represents. All elements need to be placed in a higher level element. So the window is placed in the application. And then the button box, which contains buttons, it's placed in the window. So there's a hierarchy of widgets. Lines 46 and 47, that's where things get more interesting. And essentially, they are the lines of code that make a GUI application an interactive application. That is, instead of merely presenting visual elements on the screen or drawing circles and triangles and squares, these signals, they tie visual elements to function that functionality. So when a button is clicked, and a button is just a square or rectangle, nothing actually happens when you click on a button, except when there's code attached with that visual region of the screen. And so that is what the signals do is they say take this visual representation and associate functionality with it. Line 51 is extremely important. If you, if you forget line 51, if you forget to do GTK widget show or GTK widget show all, no matter what you code, You'll spend hours trying to figure out why something does not appear on the screen or changes appear on the screen. And you've missed the call to GTK widget show or show all. So now I am in the terminal window for the local environment, the tab for the local environment. And using SCP, I've copied over the single source code file main.c and on the local side I see that folder with the single source code file main.c I just did a uh, file listing where it shows it and now I will compile that main.c file into an actual program that can be ran so the source code has been written the instructions have been written. The next step is to convert that source code into a computer program. That is to say, the source code is not a program in fact. It's simply the potential for a program. And so the compiler and linker in this case represented by the program GCC is going to take that source code file and transform it into an actual set of computer instructions that a computer can understand and execute. GCC has ran. There were no errors. The green highlight you see that's where the terminal is telling us that a file is executable. So we have a file called gtk-sample that's executable. And now I will use SCP to get a copy of that executable from the build server back down to the local environment. Notice the dash 4P, that means use IPv4 network addressing, and the P stands for preserve the timestamps that is associated with the file. 
for this entire process, maintaining accurate timestamps is critically important. If you look on the far left side of the screen, you'll see a second file has appeared. And I've attempted to run the file, and it has errored out. Segmentation fault, core dump. That usually means that a pointer, as defined in the C and C++ languages, is invalid. So another tool is at our disposal called GDB. And I can use GDB to diagnose the program, and here it shows me where the error is. And the problematic code is um, on line 35, or more specifically, um, it is on line 49. And so on line 49, I'm attempting to add a button to a button box. The problem is I haven't actually created a button. I've only declared that I will have a button at some point, but I did not fulfill that requirement. So now on line 46, I'm going to add an actual button so that the code that is now on line 51 will recognize that completed button type and use it to incorporate it into the GUI. So let's copy the file up to the build server, build it, bring it back, and that's our end result. So I could close it um, by clicking the Hello World uh, button. That's what Signal Swap establishes. It um, calls GTK Widget Destroy. And in this process, we have established that the build server is indeed in good shape for our activity. We can send code to the build server, and it will reliably convert that code to and executable. I'm going to remove the GTK sample directory. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to clean up the GTK sample directory on the build server as well. I don't need it there as well. Um, we have now verified the build server and everything is in good shape for the activities ahead.